Oh, hell no. What in the color purple is this? You know what, Shonda Rhimes? You was a violent bitch. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you did not. During black women's, black mama, I'm not one of your little friends. I'm about to give you something to really cry about in a minute, black mama month. Did you pay off the color purple reference? You are a violent bitch. with this review child I want to tell y'all about Surfshark. Surfshark VPN. Let me tell you something. I started using Surfshark because y'all know I like to travel a lot. There was one time when I went out of the country I was not able to watch Succession on HBO Max because the Wi-Fi was picking up that I was in Canada instead of America. So <laughs> I wasn't able to watch it and I didn't know about Surfshark until that happened. I came back home and one of my homegirls was telling me about it so then I installed it and now I'm able to watch series when I'm out of the country. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm able to watch the series as if I'm still in America. Hence why back in December, I was still able to create certain content while I was in Canada because I was using the service. Also, Surfshark helps you um, see cheaper ticket prices for travel. So tickets and Airbnbs. Hence why when I did go to Montreal, Canada, I was able to do some r, &R time with my cousin because I found the cheaper prices through Surfshark, okay? So not only does Surfshark VPN help me be able to still watch my series when I'm out of the country, but also it protects my VPN. So what is your VPN? A VPN is a virtual private network. So it keeps your network safe and private by covering it up like a mask. You know what I mean? So when you're online, it makes sure that your activities are masked. That way, like, can't nobody see what you're doing, what websites you're visiting. You know how you told your husband you wasn't going to get on um, Nordstrom.com, but you still be surfing Nordstrom.com? Yeah, if you have Surfshark VPN, it's going to hide that from your husband, okay? Basically, when your device connects to the internet, it basically blurs all of your activity. Using a VPN is basically like going outside with pants on, okay? Now, if you're going outside with no pants, you need more than a VPN, okay? You need help, <laughs> all right? But back to Surfshark VPN. Also, remember how I said when I was in Canada, I had to use this so that I could use my streaming account as if I was still in America? It can actually do the reverse. So, while I'm in America, if I want to be on a Canadian server, I can do that through Surfshark VPN. Oh, and Surfshark is not stingy. You can use one account on several devices. It's available on most devices, so we're talking about Windows, iMac, Android, iOS, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, the whole nine. There's 24-7 support available, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. In the case that you do find a better VPN solution, you will be able to get your money back. Surfshark has a special going on right now. Three months extra, 83% off. Just scan the QR code right there on the screen or click the link in my description box and use my promo code. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. It's your sister. I'm getting a lot of new people, so, you know, I feel like every now and then I do have to reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is Jessie. What's your name? Hi, I'm known as your sister. And I got that from the color purple, actually. I got it from the color purple, and also my mom and my aunts, they always start their conversations with sister, sister, sister. So I got that. It's a combination of things of where I got that from. But... I'm your Haitian sister, okay? Um, before I continue, shout out to all the Haitians. It is still Haitian Heritage Month. Um, yesterday was Haitian Flag Day. If you came to Rocksteady and you came to the Sac Passe night and to the Coupe night, we had a good, boy, we had a time that night. And of course, I got to sing Coupe, of course. And that was fun. So it just was a great, great time. So again, if I haven't said it on here, happy Haitian Black Day to all of my Haitians all across the globe. Bonne fête du drapeau, bonne fête du drapeau. Um, and also this weekend is Haitian Mother's Day. So in Haiti, uh, this weekend will be Haitian Mother's Day. Um, so I want to say bonne fête de mail to all of my Haitian mothers who are going to be celebrating Haitian Mother's Day. It's crazy. Y'all get two, y'all get two Mother's Days, you know, and it's only right during Black Women's I'm not one of your little friends during black women's. I'm about to give you something to cry about for real, for real in just a minute. 
Black Mama Month, okay? It's only right that y'all get several, several Haitian Mother's Day, uh, several Mother's Days uh, this month. Um, and yeah, what else did I want to say to? Oh, now listen here. Some of y'all was in my last, under my last video telling me, hey, you know, Camilla, uh, she not just the queen of uh, concerts. She's the actual queen. And I'm here to tell you, I do not care. <laughs> Somebody was like, hey, Jess, this is one of your sisters from the UK. Just letting you know, Camilla's the queen. Girl, I do not care. How many times? Listen, Camilla wouldn't. First of all, Camilla will always be in the shadow of Princess Diana. Because see, as, as evident, here, here's a little video right here. Just to show you the difference between Camilla and Princess Diana. Okay? Princess Diana was out here doing God's work during a season of life where uh, HIV and AIDS was told that you could get it by touching people. You know what I mean? Like black kids, you don't want to touch black kids. They got all these types of diseases. Like she was doing God's work. And to note, she's a cancer like me. <laughs> Cancers, we just be knowing. We really just be knowing, okay? She was out here doing God's work. Like her whole life was a ministry, all right? What is Camilla's ministry besides being the king side bitch? What is Camilla's ministry besides being the people prostitute? She will never be the people's queen. She will always be the people's prostitute. Point blank period. We know you are the people's tramp. You are the people's whore. I do not give a fuck to give her the respect. Now, if I said the bitch is the queen of concerts, she is the queen of concerts. Point blank period. Okay. If she is, if I said she's the queen of convertibles, that's what the fuck she is. Don't come in my comments, uh, 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 questioning me and trying to correct me about the shit. All right? Do we have an understanding in this bitch during Black Women's? I'm not one of y'all little friends, man. Okay? I may not be a Black mama just yet, but baby, it's innate in me. I am a Black mama by nature. I'm not one of y'all little friends. Don't be trying to correct me. All right? <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. So. Let's get back into this Queen of Charlotte review, child. So, Queen Charlotte, this is purely off of the, the heels of her hearing the conversation between Caitlyn Stark and her son, King George, okay? <laughs> and she's hearing, you know, uh, him telling his mom, look, I've done everything you asked me to do. I, I, I've done everything you asked me to do, okay? You told me to charm this bitch. So it could make things easier. I did that. You told me to bed this bitch. I did that. So we could have an air. I did that. You wanted me to crack her eggs. I did that. You want me to start cooking up an air. I'm doing that. Get the fuck off of my chemically imbalanced ass. All right. Okay. Um, and so, you know, she and her feelings now. She's like, you know what? I <sighs> This queen to be moment is not really given. It's not giving, she's your queen to be, queen of infection. No, it's, she's your queen to be, free from infection, to be used at your discretion. Bitch, that song is wild. Have y'all ever really paid attention to the lyrics of the Queen to Be song? That song is wild as hell. But anyway... Now it's coronation day and you know remember at the end of episode two uh the king fainted he was having one of his little moments or whatever and his uh butler came in and was like listen like don't worry about it don't worry I'm gonna call I'm gonna call the medic I'm gonna call the, the physician uh Charlotte is not gonna know a thing and so now it's the coronation day the, the king is nowhere to be found so you have Brimsley looking all around for the king, like he searched all over. He looking, he looking, he looking, don't find nothing. Finally, he sees the king in the cut being seen by a doctor. And as he's trying to examine what the fuck is going on, you have the king's butler like, hey, what you doing? You know, his boyfriend and all, his boyfriend's like, hey, ain't nothing to see here. And he's like, why is the king being seen by a physician other than the royal physician? And his boyfriend is like, you need to mind your business and you need to go uh, 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 tell Charlotte and make sure that she's ready for coronation. So he does that, but he's still like auspicious about the situation. Like, cause girl, like, 
that's not the royal physician. You know what I'm saying? Why do y'all have Dr. Phil in here? Like, what's going on? Like, it's giving, what's that little boy that had slapped the doctor, uh, the doctor title on his ass? The doc, what was that little boy that was in Florida? <laughs> And say he was a doctor but wasn't. That's what it was given to Brimsley. Brimsley's like, that ain't no damn doctor. Why is he examining my king like this? What is going on? So he goes off to find Queen Charlotte or whatever to help her get ready for a coronation. Now, while this is going on, uh, you have this little white girl that's overhearing her parents. And I'm concluding that her parents, her mom is one of the ladies in waiting. That's what I'm concluding based on what I see later on in the episode but you have the young lady and she's like she's talking about the fact that oh my god like they really went all the way outside of london to find uh, queen charlotte like why did they do that like of all the ladies that are in london like why did they go all the way to germany why did they go all the way to, to black germany to find this black girl to bring her here to be our queen you know she was fascinated by that though and then she was overhearing her parents talk about how oh my god like now they're giving titles to the to the niggas niggas is getting titles now like what the fuck is going on in this kingdom niggas is getting titles and she overhears her parents saying that and she's like well did you know that them niggas actually uh went to to school they went to oxford remember in the last uh in the in episode two you had lady danbury reminding caitlin stark bitch we not just first of all yeah we are niggas but we're not just any type of niggas we are from actual royalty like you know like descendants of royalty not this slavery shit that y'all got going on. This monarchy based off slavery and, and, and black blood. No, we actually come from a, 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 a royalty. My grandfather was the king of Sierra Leone. So now you have this little girl like pointing that out to her parents. I could, like I was like, yes, yes, little Becky, you better educate your white ass parents on, on what the fuck is going on with black royalty up in this bitch. Um, she was like, um. She said, Lord Danbury went to Oxford with the king's father. She said this to her parents. She's like, oh, and they actually come from actual royalty in Sierra Leone. Like, she was pointing that shit out, and her mother did not want to hear that shit. Like, her mother was not trying to hear it at all, but the father seemed to have, like, a smirk on his face. Like, okay, baby, okay, daughter. Okay, look at my little white daughter. Look at my white daughter being well versed on black issues and black a uh, 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 black royalty. Yes, like you better get it together, Becky. I know that's right. So now you have Lady Danbury who is summoned uh, to the palace again, and um, as she's being summoned, you have her husband. He's like, "Well, damn!" Like Lord Danbury is like, "Well, damn!" Like you keep getting all these invites. When am I gonna get an invite? What is going on? And he's like, "Listen, when you go down to the kingdom." When you go down to the palace, let them know that you want to host a ball. Let them know that you want to host the first ball of the, first, of, the, of the season. She looks puzzled like, damn, like, I don't know if I could pull that off. But he's like, I need you to ask that. Because remember, like, they've been shut out of everything. You know, like, yeah, they've given them these little titles. But obviously, they gave them these little titles with no real intention on really including them and making them feel like included in this kingdom and so he asked her to do that and so now she's like damn now i have another mission now right so we see lady donbury down to the she having tea and crumpets with caitlin stark and they sipping their tea or whatever and and the king's uh, the king's mom is like so what's been going on tell me the tea are they fucking or not okay has a, a, a charlotte's eggs been cracked or not bitch is, is, is my son clapping her cheeks or not, ho? I need to know, okay? I need to know if cheeks are a clapping in the palace. And how are things going between my son and Charlotte? Are they happy? Are they like, what is going on? And Lady Dunbar lying, she lying through her damn teeth. Oh yeah, everything's good. Yeah, they clapping all types of cheeks. Mm -hmm. Just cheeks are clapping. Cheeks are a clapping, baby. Cheeks are clapping. Just, just, just. Just cheeks are clapping. Just you walk by their room and all you hear is just cheeks. Just cheeks clapping. Just just lying through her damn teeth. Okay. Um. Meanwhile, while you see this uh, meeting with Lady Danbury and uh, Caitlin Stark, you see uh, images of the coronation. The coronation happens. It's beautiful. It's it's magical. They look great. And again, as soon as coronation is over, baby, they violently 
let each other hands go. They are done. But then meanwhile, again, you get another flashback. <laughs> you get a flash to uh, Lady Dunbury telling Caitlyn Stark, oh, they're having a good time creating a family. Oh, yeah. It, oh, that family's going to be beautiful. They're having a great time creating a family. All they be doing is just in that palace creating a family. Just lying. Just lying. Lying like hell. Meanwhile, after the coronation, we see Charlotte and Lady Dunbury walking through, you know, one of her gardens. And she's like, I hate him. I hate him. I cannot stand this white nigga. I cannot stand, I hate every iota of his pink skin. I cannot do this. He's horrible. He's a liar. He ugly. His breath stank. Like, she's just, <laughs> he mean, okay? Like, she is just going down the list of why she hates this man, okay? I hate his voice. I hate his eyes. I hate his eyeballs. Have you seen his ears? This man got ugly ass ears. I hate him. I hate the fact that he could hear. I hate the fact that he got legs and he could walk. Like, she was just saying all the things she hated. I was like, oh my God. Baby. Oh my God. Somebody please save the queen. Baby, they even show Charlotte and, and, and George sitting down for dinner. Mind you, this is a 10 foot table. Charlotte hates this man so much. She said, are you breathing? Why the fuck are you breathing at the dinner table? Is this man breathing? Why is he breathing at my dinner table? But it was so crazy because like, she is so mad. He is so mad. Like she's mad at him. He's mad that she's mad with him. And he mad at the situation. And they down to the dinner table just arguing 10 feet away. And then they both get up and they start arguing like right next, like right in front of each other. And then they say, well, it's an even day. The title of the episode was Even Days. So it's an even day. So basically, they supposed to have sex on even days. They schedule themselves to have sex every even day so that they can produce a child faster. The faster they do this, the faster that they can be done with their duty to each other, right? And so they argue and they argue and all of a sudden... Girl, they just start fucking. Like, they, they fucking. They fucking down to the dinner table. Mind you, like, the staff is there. All I see is George Washington wigs. Just George Washington wigs all over the place. The wigs don't know what to do. Girl, they just hunching. Next thing you know, I'm seeing neck bones flying. Ham hocks flying, baby. Hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres are flying. Hors d'oeuvres are flying. They just fucking down to the damn dinner table. Like, what the fuck? Is it me or is even day sex uh, 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 kind of delicious? I don't know. It just I, it, like if this is what even day sex look like, this might be could of what I needed to have when I get married. Just that even day sex look kind of lit. I'm sorry. Is it me or the even day sex looks kind of lit? They down to the damn dinner table fucking. They in the garden fucking. Baby, they in the hot tub fucking. Charlotte didn't even take off her damn clothes. She just getting to the hot tub fully clothed. Just fucking. Just fucking. Just fucking. They they having a even day sex. Okay? They say, you know, we gonna get this air by any means necessary. Alright? So anyway, y'all. The honeymoon is over. Charlotte is ready to take her position as the queen. She's ready for the activities. She's ready for speaking engagements. She's ready for her TED talk. She's ready for low vibrational black women's brunches. You know what I'm saying? She ready for the black mama brunches. She's ready for all that shit. You know what I'm saying? She's ready to have a cold stormy brunch where she looks at people's plates and tell them, baby, that's a low vibrational plate. She's ready for all that shit. All right. So she asked Grimsy, okay, honeymoon over. What the fuck is going on? Am I having tea and crumpet with my bitches? Like what's going on? It's tea and crumpet time. Okay. And then she asked Grimsy, like, you know, when does the king host events? And Grimsy was like, girl, the king don't be hosting no events, child. The king do not be hosting no events. And she's like, but why? He's really good with people. He's really well-spoken. Like, he has a good, uh, he has like a very like charismatic personality. Why does he not do any speaking engagements? Why doesn't he host anything? Like her, you know, something is wrong here. And then Brimsley slips up and he says, I don't know. It might have something to do with the doctor. And she's like, what doctor? And he's like, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 he slipped up, okay, because she was not supposed to know about that. So now the next time that she sees the king, it's on their even day, they finish fucking, and she's like, so what's up with this doctor that was seeing you down to the coronation? Like, what's going on? And George is like, oh, you know, I mean, it's just a coronation thing, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, it's like a traditional thing on coronation, and she's like, that don't make no motherfucking sense. And if a doctor is seeing you, why haven't I been seen by any doctors yet? 
Like, I'm literally trying to have your child. I'm, we're trying to conceive. So why hasn't a doctor come to me yet? And as she was saying this, I was thinking to myself, here go racism again. Because I can, I, I can, I will bet you by golly wow that if she was white, she would have been seen by a doctor. Been. So what in the Jim Crow is this? Why hasn't the queen been seen by a doctor? She, she raises up a good, good point. Why hasn't anybody been examining her, examining her womb, you know, seeing what's going on? Especially back then, the way that they use, like, as royals, even, even now as royals, like, your health is everything. How do y'all think Queen Elizabeth was, was able to live 237 years? Look at this lady. This bitch lived to be 258 years old. How the fuck you think she did that shit? Because of the royal doctors. Like, royal physicians, their whole job is to keep you alive. Like, how do y'all think her old ass was able to stay alive so damn long? Okay? So, yeah, that to me was very racist. The fact that she hasn't seen a physician yet. Anyway, she doesn't buy the whole story that, oh, this physician was because of coronation day. She doesn't buy it at all. Like, whatever he's selling, honey, she ain't buying. And this is, again, like, just an ode to black women's during black women's. We not one of your little friends during black women's. We finna give you something to really cry about in a moment month. Black mama month. Black women be knowing. Black women be knowing. Okay, like the way that Charlotte just knew off rip, something is wrong. Like from the big, from the time she came to the palace, she knew something was wrong with this man. She knew black women be knowing. We really, I need a t-shirt that said black women be knowing. When I say black women be knowing, it is a real thing because black women be knowing. We always be knowing, but you know. We be knowing that we be telling y'all and y'all don't want to be listening until it's too late. Then we got to look at y'all and say, what? What do we have to say? I told y'all niggas. <laughs> we told y'all niggas. Like, black women be knowing. So now we're seeing Lady Dansbury and Caitlyn start again, meeting up again. And uh, uh, the King's the, the King's George mom is like, listen, do you see any signs of pregnancy? Do you see any signs of pregnancy? We need a baby ASAP. We need a baby ASAP. This is how we know that the great experiment worked. And it, is it me or I've never heard the monarchy being described as the great experiment, but it really makes sense now that I'm hearing her say it, like the great experiment, like this is a sign that it works, right? And so Lady Donbury is like, no, I, I'm, unfortunately, I don't see any signs of them being pregnant just yet. I don't see any signs of pregnancy from Charlotte, but you know, they are having a good time creating a baby. She lying again. And um, the queen is like, no, we need something to celebrate. Like we need something to celebrate. We need something that's gonna bring like uh, the kingdom together and nothing brings the kingdom together like a king having an heir, right? And so this is when Lady Donbury takes her chance. And she's like, oh, well, you know what? I'll, how about we have a ball, the first ball of the season? How about we throw the first ball of the season and I host it? And immediately the, his mom is like, no. But what I love about Lady Donbury is this. She is such a smart bitch. She's like, oh, you don't want, you don't want me to host the first ball of the season? Well, it would be a shame. It would be a shame during these consciously racist times that you wouldn't want a black women's to host the first ball of the season. Now, she didn't say that in those words, but it was definitely giving that tone during Black Mama Month. And, and, and what she said too was, and it would be such a shame for Charlotte to be pregnant and with child, but the king's mother to be the last person to find out. She ate that. It would be a shame for you to find out later on down the line when she's well into her pregnancy. Because remember, she's supposed to be her ear. And now she's letting her know, oh, that little, that, that, that Negro ear you thought you had, bitch? If you don't let my black ass host this first ball of the season, bitch, you're not going to be hearing a thing. <laughs> you're not going to be hearing a thing. Hello? You're not going to be getting a thing from me. You're not going to be getting a cuckoo. Nothing. Not a team. 
team if I don't host this first ball of the season. Baby, she ate that. <laughs> four plus four is what? Eight. She ate that. <laughs> she sure did. So after Lady Danbury gives her her little ultimatum, we see King George's mom say, oh, you know what? Let me see what I could do. Let, 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 let me see what could be done. Yeah, bitch, you better see what the fuck you could do, puss ass hoe. If you want to know when this child coming, you want to know when she's with child? Let me host the ball. So anyway, uh, at this point, we see Lady Danbury go home, child. She goes home to Frederick Douglass. Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. They having color purple sex again. I cannot. Oh, my God. This man is older than Genesis 1, verses 1. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God. <laughs> like, this man is older than the book of Genesis. God, please. Like, Lord, like, this is not going to end well. I'm sorry. Like, and Shonda Rhimes, you will pay for your crimes. Because what, what is this? Shonda Rhimes, you will pay for your crimes. I'm telling you. I'm not letting this go. You will pay for your crimes. Okay? You will pay for putting this color purple sex scene on my damn television. You will pay for that shit. I'm telling you. All right? I will not forget. Shonda Rhimes is a violent person for this. Shonda Rhimes is not okay. <laughs> I love Shonda Rhimes, okay? If I ever meet Shonda Rhimes, I promise you I will scream. I love, love, love her. So, you know, after she has sex with Frederick Douglass, we do see him have this moment like he's pressing her about the ball. He's pressing her about the ball. And he's very, like, he's not, like, being mean about it. He's being persistent about it. And... You can see that she sees where this is coming from. And she tells him, like, listen, you are every bit as good as they are. She reassures him of that. You are every bit as good as they are. Like, baby, even if we don't get this ball, I just want you to know, like, I just want you to remember where you come from. You come from actual royalty. You are every bit as good. And, and actually, you're better than them, to be honest. You know, but she reassures him. And I like that moment. That moment was very, like, it, it touched me a little bit. And then we get back to, you know, just seeing, oh, Lord, I just, let me regroup. Let me regroup, okay? So, you know what? Lady Danbury, being a black woman that she is, she fully walked into her fuck it, I'll do it myself spirit, you know? And she says, I'm going to have this ball with or without the cosign of the king mother or not. I am going to throw this ball. So she makes a decision that she's going to go ahead and send out invites to everybody. Baby, the white women are furious. The white women are furious. White people are mad. Pink fingers is mad. Baby, white tears everywhere. Just white tears, white anger everywhere. And she didn't give a fuck because she is determined to host this ball. Uh, Queen Charlotte summons her ladies-in-waiting. And again... That woman, I can't remember her name, but the, the little white girl who was talking about how, oh yeah, and you know the niggas, they, they, act, they are actual royalty, unlike y'all. <laughs> they are actual royalty and they actually went to Oxford, like they really got money, they got money, money, okay? Them Sierra Leone niggas, oh they got money, money, real money, okay? Y'all got money, but they got money, money, you know? And it was actually her mom, her mom is a lady in waiting. So Charlotte is there with the ladies in, in waiting and there's a little boy playing um, Beethoven, Mozart, all that shit, and you know, the white women's was like making certain commentary or whatever, but Lady Danbury's was shutting their ass down, you know, she was always coming through with the realness, you know, yeah, uh, you know, actually, they said something, but the, the, the white lady said something about the boy playing, um, piano, and Lady Danbury was like, uh, this is actually like Queen Charlotte's, like, favorite selections, like, this is like, Beethoven is her, like, that's her nigga, like, she loves listening to Beethoven, like, that's her shit, you know what I'm saying, like, let, let him rock, you know what I mean? Like, shutting their ass down. And, of course, they didn't like it because she's the only black... I think she was the only black lady in waiting. There might be just one more girl, but I think she was the only black lady in waiting. So, anyway. Then you have the one white lady say, Oh, um, you know, I heard about your little ball. I'm sorry I won't be able to attend. <laughs> and then, as she says that, all the other women say, to, Yeah, you know, we're not going to be able to come. You know, all the white women. It's giving very Jim Crow. Is giving very Jim Crow. Like, one white lady says she ain't going. All the white ladies say she ain't going. So now, you have Lady Danbury, like, kind of panicking. Because, like, damn, like, the white people not coming. Not that I really want them to come. But I need them to come. Because I need to make a statement to the white men's and the white women's. So now she's panicking in her inner self. Anyway, while all this is going on, 
uh, Queen Charlotte is very distracted. She looks out into the window and she sees her husband in the garden, uh, taking care of horses, plucking leaves out the bushes, like doing all types of handiwork. You know, the thing about King George, you know, say what you want about his mental state. He was actually a man's man. You know, he was out there like plying wood, building shit, growing shit in the garden, building uh, uh, building homes and shit. You know, all the shit that you niggas with podcasts not doing today, King George was doing that. You know what I'm saying? You niggas now, all y'all niggas got is microphone, say podcast, 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 tout la semaine, tout la semaine, je n'ai son podcast, son podcast, son, son, eh, 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 son high value man, son, son modern women, son podcast, son microphone, chache quand même pour nous faire! Chache travail pour nous faire. Toute la scène journée son podcast, son podcast, son podcast, ça fait tête pour nous faire mal là. Chache travail pour nous faire. Fine work. Get a job. Indeed.com. Careerbuilder.com. Google.com. Find a job. You know, King George was actually a man's man. He was doing shit. Y'all niggas ain't shit today. Y'all shit. Y'all niggas can't even build a damn table. Talk about what you, what do you bring to the table? Can you build a table, bitch? Because King George could. And King George had no business doing that shit, which is what made it even worse. She's like, why is my man building tables? <laughs> Charlotte's like, why is my man building shit? Why is my man growing shit? Why is my man being a man? <laughs> he, he the whole king out here. You not supposed to be doing no handiwork. Okay, so anyway, keep in mind it's an odd day, right? They don't talk to each other on odd days. They don't see, they don't do nothing together on odd days. But she sees him in the garden, so she goes into the garden. She's like, "Oh, what are you doing? What's going on? Why are you out in the garden sweating bullets and and, and carrying on? What the hell is going on?" And he's like, "Well, I'm tending to my duties. I'm a farmer." And she's like, "Oh, you farmer? Okay." She doesn't buy it though. One thing about her. Whatever he's selling, she ain't buying, all right? And so then she goes, we see her go down to the garden herself. And she asked Brim, Brimsley this question. She was like, you know, are there medicinal plants in the garden? And I said, look at this black woman. Oh, my God. Look at this black woman. Like, at the tender age of 17, she knows something is wrong, like, to the point where she's asking, are there medicinal plants in this garden? Like, if that ain't some black woman shit, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. She's already going into, how do I fix this man? How do I fix this man? Something is wrong. How do I fix this man? During black mama month. Like, literally, how do I fix this man? So anyway, now, fast forward, we see the king mother. Um, she's with her court, and they upset, like, all the dudes with the George Washington wigs on, I'm talking about they George Washington wigs was tilted to the side. Bitch, what the fuck is going on? Why is there a black women's sending out invitations to host the first ball of the season? You need to have her resend that. And um, Caitlin Stark is like, man, I can't, I, I don't want to do that because here's the thing, like, I want to unite society. We have to do things that are going to unite society and, and show that the great experiment works, right? And they're like, let me tell you something. If you don't make her cancel these invitations, the other side, as in, i.e., the white people, we not coming. And so if we don't come, that's going to look bad on society as well. So make her resend her invite so we won't have that problem. So I guess uh, Caitlin Stark did tell Lady Danbury to cancel her ball because then you see Lady Danbury go to Charlotte and she's like, listen, you know I'm having a ball, right? And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait for you to have your little ball or whatever. And she's like, well, your mother-in-law is telling me to cancel my ball. And Charlotte is like, okay, what they got to do with me? And Lady Donbury had to look at her and say, it has everything to do with you. Everything to do with you. But as she's talking to her, Charlotte is looking at her husband outside and she's trying to figure out why her husband is in the garden, why her husband is building shit. And, and Lady Dunbar tells her, listen, you're so busy trying to figure out why a man that doesn't like you doesn't like you and you don't see the real issue here. You are here. You need to speak for us. Us as in us. Okay. I love that she told her, listen, why do you think I've been telling you to, to, to stay steadfast, 
to, to breed with this man, even though you don't want to. It is because you need to be figuring out what you need to be doing as queen. Your job as queen is not to figure out why your husband doesn't like you. Your job as queen is to fulfill your duties and to open doors for your kind. You are black. You are black. You are a nigga. You need to be speaking for the niggas. This is why you are here. You are here to change shit in this kingdom. We need you right now, right here. This is the first time that we're really having an opportunity to be seen and heard in this kingdom. And it is because you are here. You need to make this ball happen. You know, quite frank. And, and, and it's like the bells go off in Queen Charlotte's mind. I love what's brewing between Lady Donbrary and Queen Charlotte because I don't think it, I really don't think that if Queen Charlotte didn't have a Lady Donbrary, I don't think that she would really be as alert as she is to what her position is in this kingdom as she is because the Queen Mother wasn't trying to be there for her. Nobody else was really trying to be there for her. Lady Dombra is the only person really who's there to tell her as a fellow black woman, this is your duty. This is your job. Stay focused. Stay focused. So now we get to see uh, Queen Charlotte and King George have even day sex. Baby, they even day sex is amazing. I mean, the, I, honestly, I mean, what, what's, it, what's the day? Is it an even day? That's what I need. I need me an even day nigga in my life. <laughs> need me an even day nigga in my life that's what i need <laughs> okay because even day sex looks lit all right after they have their even day sex we we see uh, queen charlotte tell him you know what i understand why you're in the garden the way you are day in day out you live for the happiness and the misery of an entire kingdom of an entire nation you must feel like a caged animal like you must feel like you're in a cage like to be a constant exhibit but to me you're a person you can be a person with me and we see her trying to like you know but, but let, let me let me put some sugar on this man like you know you can be who you are with me right and you can see him kind of soften up and and then she brings up you know lady donbury's ball and he co-signs to it. He's like, you know what? Let's go down to the ball. So now we're at the ball, right? And people are coming in. All the ladies in waiting who said they weren't going to come, come in. And uh, the lady the lady who had the daughter who was like, yeah, I mean, y'all white and everything. And yeah, y'all royals. But the black people, they are actual real royals. Like they come from real royalty. Unlike y'all, her name is Lady Ledger. And so she comes in and she's like, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't miss this ball for a thing. Like, you know... <laughs> Lady and Lord Denver, they're shocked that everybody's coming in and you have Lady Ledger, oh, he was always going to come. And then her husband comes to the side after she walks off. Her husband's like, uh, she tried not to come, but the king sent a notice to all of us to be here. So that's why we're all here. But she best believe she tried not to come. And he tells her, you know what? Lord Ledger tells her, um, Lady Denver, I like your style. Let's be friends. I like you. Let's be friends. And again, I always felt like her husband, remember when the, the daughter was talking about the black royals and the difference between white royals and, and black royals was like white royals wasn't as real as black royals. He had a smirk on his face. He knew the deal. I really, really like him. And I, I, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen with his relation with the Danburys. Anyway, I just, I love this moment for Lord and Lady Danbury, like people are coming in. This is the social event of the season. Like it's the first ball of the season and it is a black women's hosting it during black women's. I'm not one of your little friends during black women's. I'm gonna really give you something to cry about in a moment, black mama month. I love to see it, right? But as they're sitting there, they're seeing that, okay, even though the ball is lit, it's kind of not lit because people are not really like mingling with each other. You kind of have blacks over here, whites over here. Like it's not really looking, it, it's giving Jim Crow. It's giving segregation. It's giving, you know, Rosa Parks to the back. You know what I'm saying? Like it's giving, you know, what it, it's not giving what it's supposed to have gave. Um, so then we see King George and Queen Charlotte into the motherfucking ball, bitch. They come through the ball. They look good as hell, bitch. The Afro is throwing, bitch. Uh, George's edges is laid to the side. Bitch. 
bitch, they looked it good. They looked it good. And they come in, you know, everybody's bowing down as they should. And then they go to the Danbury's and they greet them. And as soon as they do that, they go and they start tootsie rolling on the dance floor, baby. It's giving pirouettes. It's giving, you know what I'm saying? It's giving, it's giving turn, turn, pirouettes, stockings, pointy shoes. That's what it was giving. And I love the music that was playing in the background. I think it was, um, some people live for the fortune. Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. Like, I love that they play that and they do it in the violin form. Like, some people want it all, but I just want nothing at all. If I ain't got you, baby, I ain't got you, baby. Some people want diamond rings, some just want everything. But everything means nothing if I ain't got you. I loved it. 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 And as they start dancing, you see black people, white people. Well, actually, it was Lord Ledger. He came up to Lady Danbury. Remember, Lord Ledger is Lady Ledger's husband. He went up to uh, Lady Danbury, asked for her hand. They dance. And then everybody starts mingling. Now you see, now you see all these these white people and black people sandwiches just just formulating. You know what I mean? We're seeing biracial sandwiches just being formed. You know what I mean? I loved it. Now what was the food? Am I the only one who's noticing that these balls, these events, these royal events don't be having no food? Where's the food? Where are the hors d'oeuvres? Ain't nobody passing around no no pig in a blanket or nothing, Lord. Where is the food? What's going on in this kingdom? Seriously, I'm worried. Uh, Princess Augusta, which is uh, King George's mom. I know I keep calling her Caitlyn Stark. Uh, Caitlyn Stark looks at her son and she's like, wow, I've never seen my son this happy. And as you're looking at him, his eyes were just a twinkling. Like you see, you see that he's happy. You see something's coming over him, right? So he looks happy and she, see, she sees that. So anyway, y'all, the ball is over. Lady and Lord Donbury are excited as hell. Like they are in their palace, like screaming of excitement. And Lady Donbury said, wow, babe, like we are a success. And he says, yep, I'm a success. I'm a success. Did you guys notice the difference between that? Did you notice the difference between that? She says, we are. He says, I am. And it's just, again, the, the black women are ch <laughs> the underappreciation, the lack of respect, the lack of reverence, the lack of good treatment. It's just like, how do you not look at your wife and say, baby, thank you. We are a success because of what you did. Thank you. Like, there's no appreciation. There's no appreciation, which is it, it kind of makes you think right about the fact that Throughout history period, black women, one thing we're going to do, we're going to fight for our rights as a whole, right? In our community. But, but the, uh, the men in our community hardly ever fight for our rights as well. The men just be worried about the men. The women be worried about the women and the men. And they'll actually put the men above the women too. But the men never do that. Till this day, if you just look at the pattern, like the issues that we fight for, Literally, like, women, the black women literally are the backbone of our community. And we're always fighting for issues that affect all of us. But, baby, we never get the same energy. Black women never get the same energy. And you see it displayed even here. Like, that small little moment, you see it displayed even there. She got no flowers for all the work that she did. Now, did you guys notice the difference between how... Lord Donbury talked to Lady Danbury versus King George talking to Charlotte after the ball. So after the ball, you have Charlotte undressing, getting undressed by, you know, the workers. And King Charles is sitting there with her and he's like, do you understand like what you did tonight? Like, do you understand that you've done more than Great Britain has done for the society in the last hundred years 
with just one night, one event. You've taken a hundred steps forward, more steps than Great Britain has ever taken with this one event that you backed by backing Lady Donbury's ball. And he's just praising her and worshiping her. And he's in awe of her. And she says to him, you know, babe, you can do anything. And he's like, I can do anything as long as I have you by my side. And he picks her up, he carries her. Like, and then you know what? They spend the night together. And it was an odd night, baby. So now they was gonna have odd night sex, baby. But did you just, do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? It's almost as if Lord Danbury saw Lady Danbury as a threat. But George was looking at Charlotte as an asset. There, there was a difference. There's a difference. The black man looking at, at his black wife as a threat. You always get these invites. You always get, you always that. What about me? What about me? Where you have the white guy looking at his black wife. Oh, she's an asset to me. She's an asset to me. She can help me do things that I don't really, didn't really believe I could do. You see the difference? Just want to put that out there. You know, and I'm not saying that every black man looks, I'm not saying that about every black guy. But I'm just saying there's a pattern here. <laughs> there's a pattern here and that it's crazy how this series is shining a light on that because that's real world right there. That's literally like a lot of the experiences of black women in our community is that our men kind of will see us as a threat instead of seeing us as an asset. Imagine the things black people could do if black men would stop competing with black women and just see us as assets. See us as an asset. See us as something that somebody who comes in to enhance what you have going on because quite frankly, that is what black women do. We enhance every situation we go into. Just want to put that out there. Lord, so now we go back to Lady Dunbury and Lord Dunbury's room, child, and they having color purple sex, child. She's in there having color purple sex with Frederick Douglass, baby. Her head is knocking on the head like, poor thing. I'm like, this lady, gonna, she gonna get an aneurysm. She's gonna get an injury fucking around like this. Head just hitting the headboard just ever so violently. Okay, just a lot of violence there, all right? And so he hitting it hard from the back, you know what I'm saying? Rolling around on the front, you know what I mean? Like he hitting it hard from the back. Next thing you know, we hear something drop. I said, oh, hell no. What in the color purple is this? What in the color purple? Hell, you know what Shonda Rhimes? You was a violent bitch. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you did not. During black women's, black mama, I'm not one of your little friends. I'm about to give you something to really cry about in a minute, black mama month. Did you pay off the color purple reference? You are a violent bitch. You ain't shit, Shonda Rhimes, but you, but you the shit at the same damn time. You ain't shit, but you the shit at the same damn time. This lady ain't shit. Shonda Rhimes really ain't shit. And let me tell you who else ain't shit. Lady Danbury ain't shit. Bitch, she turned around to make sure that man was dead. She said, wait a minute now. This man is really dead. She checked his pulse. Have my dreams come into fruition, bitch? Is this man finally dead, bitch? She runs out the room. Runs to her maid, right? This is what's really, this really killed me. So apparently they had their things that they would do with her. You know, every time, right after she would have sex with Frederick Douglass, she would go and get a bath. You know, like they would clean her off. Her maid would clean her off really, really well. You know, just to kind of just desensitize her to the whole experience. So her maid was right outside the door. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get your, your blankets, your, 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 your washcloth. Your, let, me, let me get your bath. Your bath is already ready. And she's like, uh-uh, girl. We ain't gonna be taking no bath tonight. <laughs> Bitch, we free. <laughs> Bitch, we are free. <laughs> free at last. <laughs> free at last. Thank God Almighty! I'm free at last, bitch! Bitch, and when she said that, not the man saying, we free? We free, bitch? Yes, we are free. It's over. It's over, bitch. I ain't gotta fuck Frederick Douglass.
violence no more. I was screaming. I was screaming. I screamed watching this. Literally screamed. So, you know, they carry out their plan. Apparently, they had a plan just in case this, mo this motherfucker ever did fall deceased. She goes back in the room. So, all right, I'm going to go back in the room. I'm going to scream like I'm terrorized. You know the drill. So, Lady Danbury goes back into the room. It's giving, well, how did he die? On top of me. I'm sorry. The color purple fan in me screamed. Okay? This was crazy. Like, this is crazy. This was crazy. It was really, really crazy. After Lady Dunbury gave her Oscar winning performance <laughs> and cried, oh my God, my husband is dead. My husband is dead. My husband died. He dead. He gone. After she gave her Oscar winning performance, we see an older version of her. So this was a part of the episode I didn't really take much note on until I saw this scene. So earlier in the episode, we saw one of the ladies in waiting. I always remember her, I always forget her name, but you know, she was at a church mourning, you know, her husband's death. It was the anniversary of his death, right? And while she was mourning the anniversary of his death, you know, you had Lady Dunbury in the background, like, mm, you know, sorrow, sorrows, you know, <laughs> she was kind of giving what older Charlotte gives, sorrow, sorrows. Um, but while they're at the church and watching her cry over her dead husband, she's like, you know, you're fortunate. And so they go back to a scene with her and that same woman. And she was telling her, cause they kind of got into a, t a, a, a argument about that. Cause the lady was like, you know, I just found it very strange how you see me mourning my husband and you called me fortunate. And Lady Dunbury was like, I called you fortunate because you had something to mourn. You know, your husband actually loved you. My husband only saw me as a breeder. He didn't see me of something that had value. He didn't see me of a person that had value, a person that had asset. He just saw me as a breeder, someone that he could have kids with. That was pretty much it. Never asked me anything about myself, never cared about me as a person. Your husband loved you. And so with you, the memory of your husband lives on. Through me, my husband dies. And so that's why I call you fortunate. Me, I have nothing to mourn, nothing to mourn. And when she said that, I said, whew. This series, it's, it's such a good series and there's so many nuances, but the, the painful part of the series is how it just shines a light on black women and like, damn, like where, where can we really find love? Like, where do we really find love? Not saying that there's nowhere for us to find love, but where, where do, where is it? You know, it's just, it's, it's a sad mirroring of reality for black women in this world. It, how we're seen in these relationships that we get into. We're not seen as people a lot of the times, and especially during that time, you know, we're there for, to breed. You know what I mean? You think about even black women coming into this country as, you know, slaves. We were there to breed. That was it. Shut up, breed. We need more slaves. We need more slaves. So we need you to keep fucking while you're a slave. I need you to be a slave and I need you to keep fucking. I need you to keep breeding. Like there was double the work on our bodies. You know what I mean? And it's just sad when you really think about just, it's sad. I'm sad. So then we flash to a current, you know, Queen Charlotte older, you know, Brimsley is still on her ass. Brimsley is never leaving her side. And Brimsley, she asked Brimsley a question. She said, Brimsley, why do you think my daughter's never married? Right? Which I'm sorry. In the first, my first review, I was talking about how her daughter died. It was actually her, it was her son's wife or something, something like that who died. So my bad on that. It wasn't none of her actual daughters, but she was asking Bridget, she's like, why do you think none of my daughters have ever married? And he said something, he said, you know, it's because you're still the queen. Like you're still the queen. So it's, it really doesn't matter whether they marry or not because none of them are gonna be queen. 
if that makes sense. That's what I got from that conversation. So anyway, we get a flashback to her younger self. And, you know, that night after Queen Charlotte and King George had odd night sex, we see her wake up in the morning and we see her look to her bed and King George is not there. And she looks up and he's drawing, like manically drawing on the walls. You know, and this is in the middle of the night. Like we're in the, the dead of the night. He's drawing, drawing, drawing. And she goes up to him. She's like, George, what are you doing? And he starts running around the palace barefoot. She's like, George, George. Like she's trying to get a hold of him. And then now the staff wakes up and they hear him. He's barefoot running around, screaming, screaming. I gotta go look at Venus. I gotta look, go look at Venus, 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 Venus. And then like he runs out of the palace barefoot. And she's like, George, come back in the palace. Come back in the house. George, what are you doing? This man runs outside, rips off his clothes. He's naked. He's looking at the stars and he's like, Venus, Venus, Venus. I knew you'd come for me. My love, I knew you'd come for me. I love you. I love you, Venus. I came to see Venus. And he's screaming and crying for Venus with his clothes off. And everybody's trying to get a hold of him. His butler, other staff workers, Brimsley, everybody. And Charlotte says, but I'm Venus. I'm Venus. And he turns around to her, crying, snot coming out, bave, drool. And he's like, you're Venus? She's like, yes, I'm Venus. I'm Venus. You're Venus, but I thought you were in the sky. And she's like, but I'm here now. And I'm going in the house. He's like, I'm going in the house too. She's like, come on. She puts a coat on him. They go into the house. And that's the end of the episode. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So now we know for sure that the king ain't how you doing. We know he ain't got COVID. <laughs> what the fuck is this? This is more than a manic episode. Who the fuck is Venus? Now I know Venus is a planet, but is that a metaphor for something else? Like, is he in love with another woman who loved Venus? And did she die some shit? Like what is, what is happening? This just is a lot. So this brings us to episode four. So top of episode four, we fresh out of the garden. We fresh out of King George talking to Venus, Pluto, and all them other damn planets. You know, he is naked and, you know, the court is bathing him. And Charlotte is right there. Queen Charlotte is right there bathing him too. And they're like looking at her like, hey, you know, it's not normal for the queen to bathe the king. And she's like, I mean, it's not normal for me to be pulling the king out of the garden uh, amidst him having discourse with the damn Scott. What the fuck is going on with my husband? What is wrong with my husband? And nobody got the answer, Sway. Don't nobody got the answer, Sway. What the fuck is wrong with my husband? So now we flash back to the very day that Charlotte was on a boat coming uh, uh, from Black Germany over to London and the queen, uh, the king mother calls George in in front of the court and says, hey, we found your wife, right? Mind you, they had to go pull George out of the garden where he was farming. And she's like, you know, we don't find your wife. And he's like, she's like, listen, every day that we don't have an heir, we put the great experiment in danger. We need that. Right. And George is like, you know, I don't give a fuck about none of this air shit y'all talking about because I'm farming. Right. What, the, what does the kingdom want? A baby or cheap bread? And his mom was like, well, bitch, we got neither right now. So what the fuck? We ain't got the, the bread ain't cheap and we ain't got no damn baby. We ain't got neither. Now, I done got your wife. She on her way. Go clean all that motherfucking garden dirt off your fucking ass so we can get you down to the altar so you can give me a grandchild. <laughs> okay? Now, once she revealed to him, like, baby, your wife is on the way. The contract's been signed, sealed. She about to be delivered. She's yours. Okay? He starts having a manic episode. Like, he just, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm just trying to give the visuals of what he was doing. And she tells everybody to get the fuck out. You know, like she knows something is wrong with her son. So this is a week before his wedding. Mind you, Charlotte is on a boat coming. Remember, mind you, remember back then, like <laughs> people ain't get on planes. They was on a boat. Like if you're going from fucking London to Germany, baby, you're on that boat for like a month. 
Okay, like it was ridiculous. So she's on a boat making her way there. We see King George go through these observations from different doctors. We have several doctors coming in, trying to examine him. Like he's in this room and they're all like circling around him and his mom is there. And people are saying different things. Different doctors are saying different things that they are diagnosing him with, different methods to treat it. And then there was one doctor, there was one physician who stood up and said, I don't believe that George's illness is an actual physical illness. I believe his illness is located in his nerves, right? And so when he said that, the other doctors are getting upset because they're like, oh my God, like, are you declaring the king to be insane? If you do that, that is treason. And he said, no, I just feel like the treatment is not what you guys are all saying. I believe in simply talking to him and simply talking to him in a certain way will heal him. He doesn't believe in all this medication that the people are coming with. He believes in simply talking to him. So to me, I feel like he was trying to say that he had a mental condition and I'm thinking, okay, cool. He about to get his doctor feel on. Like he about to get his doctor feel on. He about to talk to him and you know, like just be his therapist, you know? So he starts talking to George and George is very calm as he's talking to this guy. And I'm like, all right, cool. We got this shit under control. Dr. Phil is in this bitch. He about to cure everything by therapizing the fuck out of George. Mind you, George is having a manic episode and I'm calling it a manic episode because I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know what kind of episode this is, but so we're just going to say he's having a manic episode and the doctor tells him, listen, George, you command an entire kingdom. You can command yourself. And George comes too. He comes out of his manic uh, episode. He's like, you know what? Yes, I can command myself. So I'm like, okay, this shit, this Dr. Phil shit is working. Now what the show is doing is taking us beyond the veil and showing us everything that we've seen so far in the series, but from George's point of view. I loved this. See, this is why you need writers. This is why you need to pay writers, correct? Right? Because when you actually get writers, they do these things. They give you this masterpiece that they're giving in this series. So now we're seeing everything from his point of view. So we go back to the wedding day, right? George finds out that Charlotte is getting her runaway bride on and she's leaving. So he's like, I'm about to leave too. Shit, fuck this wedding. I don't even want to get married anyway. So he's leaving, right? So he runs into the physician and the physician is like, where are you going? And he's like, well, Charlotte is leaving. So if Charlotte's leaving, I'm leaving too. And he's like, well, if your bride is leaving, you need to remedy that. You're the king. You need to remedy that, right? And George is like, well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for anything. And the physician says, I have examined you. You are ready. You are getting married today. You are ready. Mind you, George now is slipping into a manic episode. His hand is shaking and his body starts shaking. Next thing you know, the physician slaps the fuck out of George. I'm talking about bop, like pimp hand, way motherfucking strong, too strong, okay? Was I the only one shocked by this? And once he, baby, that slap landed, as soon as that slap landed, I'm talking about the guards, everybody was ready to behead this nigga. And George is like, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. And he slaps this nigga, I'm talking about to the pink meat. First of all, I didn't even know that white people had pink meat. I said, God damn, so white people got pink skin and pink meat. I'll be damned. What a turn of events. So he slapped him to the pink meat and slapped him into coming too. Next thing you know, that's when we see George go into the garden and he talks Queen Charlotte out of not escaping. Then we revisit the wedding night. We revisit when he left her alone on the wedding night and we see that he was about to have another manic episode. So that's why he did not want to spend the night with her. That is why George built her an entire palace to live by herself on her own because he never wanted her to know what he was going through. That's why he was down to the stethoscope room looking at Venus and Pluto and Mars, all that shit. You know, he was rather stay in his stethoscope room because if he's in the stethoscope room, she not gonna know that not only that he just get his ass slapped to the pink meat, but also that he doesn't know what's going on mentally with himself. He's having these manic episodes. Side note, <laughs> somebody was like, Jess, it's a telescope, not the stethoscope. Bitch, it's a stethoscope, okay? He was down 
down to the stethoscope room and he was stethoscoping the sky. And he did that. He did all that because he did not want to know. He did not want her to know that it, when he's not in the stethoscope room, that he's having manic episodes. I said what the fuck I said. I'm not one of y'all little friends during Black Mama Month. Don't correct me, okay? <laughs> Don't correct me. So now we see that post- uh, the stethoscope room scene, we see that he goes to the physician, the physician comes to him and he tells the physician that, listen, I want to be well. I want to be well to run my kingdom. I want to be well for my wife. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, right? So this physician literally turns George into a white slave. This physician literally builds a mini concentration camp for George. Like, I'm sorry. It was given hall of cost. Like, am I the only one who kind of like the torture chambers, like what the fuck was that? Like feeding him porridge for breakfast. Like you got, this is, this is the king of England. Okay. Eating po like cold ass porridge while Charlotte has a big buffet on a 10 foot table. The king himself is eating la bouillie. All right. La bouillie, it like super nad. For, for breakfast like it was crazy then you got him sitting in this 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 chair where they electrify him then they have like animals terrorizing him like it was insane and i'm just thinking to myself you know you have this um this physician telling him that submission is key to his healing the physician convinces him that his luxury his life of luxury his life of having people submit to him has caused this sickness that he has they got this man taking ice water baths. Like, it's insane. He doesn't have his royal barber. They have this man taking a blade to him every day to shave him. Like, it was insane watching that. They would cover his body with leeches. Like, to me, I'm watching this and I'm like, what is this physician's intention? Because it's obviously not to heal George. It feels like to me that you're taking some kind of like vindication out on George. What is this physician's story? Like now I want to know what, what is the truth? Like what is behind this physician turning George into a white slave? Like what the fuck is going on? He literally called George an animal and said that only terror could fix him. I think, what kind of medication is this? This ain't what Dr. Phil and them be doing. This ain't it. Where is Iyala Van Zandt? They ain't have no Iyala in the kingdom. So upon having a conversation one day with his butler, he, his butler was telling him, listen, like you need to spend more time with your wife. And George was like, I don't know, I can't do that. She's just very unpredictable. Like she doesn't really, she kind of marches to the beat of her own drum and like she's not controllable. I can't do this, you know? And he's like, well, maybe she's your perfect match. Maybe she is what you need. Maybe like being with her, spending more time with her is going to help you. And George is like, you know what? Maybe you're right. And so that's when we see him spending more time with her. That's when we see him down to the table, apologizing to her, telling her, you know, okay, I understand why you're upset with me. You have every right. That's when we see him going and, and, and going to the ball with her. That's when the tides change. That's when we see like that explains. So his butler is the reason for the tides changing. And the more time he did spend with her, the more he realized that that time was healthy for him. That's when we see him move in with the queen. And that was not under the physicians. You know, the physician did not okay that. The physician was very upset with that. And George was like, I'm gonna go spend time with my wife. Spending time with her is actually healthy for me. It's actually healing for me. So I'm going to go spend time, spend more time with her. I'm moving. I'm leaving. We're done here, right? So I think this is like the night after the Donsbury Ball, right? We see King George uh, just like walking around the palace and he runs into the physician. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, I fired your ass. Like, why are you here? You are fired. Like, somebody's getting fired. I fired your ass. Why are you here? And the physician is like, I mean, you may have fired me, but I'm still part of the royal physician team. And now I'm treating your wife, which is so convenient. How convenient? How motherfucking convenient? Because since when was Charlotte getting seen by any of the doctors? Remember, she even told Charles, uh, remember, she even told uh, uh, George, 
you're being seen by a doctor. I'm over here trying to con con conceive a child and nobody has seen me. Not a one doctor has taken a telescope to my heart or nothing. Ain't nobody checked for a pulse, a heartbeat, nothing, right? And so now you have the physician telling him, yeah, I'm, ch I'm um, your wife's physician now and she's with child. And so this sends George into that manic episode that we saw where he was screaming at the stars asking Venus to come down. This is what sent him into that. And so after that, after those types of flashbacks, you know, we now we understand, we understand more of why what why George was so distant from from Queen Charlotte and I'm kind of relieved because again, I was like, oh my, oh my God, I, I thought he was how you during, you know, and I didn't know how the kingdom would accept, would accept a how you during king. You know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what to think. So now for sure, for sure, we understand what has been happening with George, right? You know, not only does he have this illness, which looks like a mental illness to me, not only does he have that, but then he has this doctor, this physician who was intentionally torturing him and making it worse so fast forward we see george getting up from bed he doesn't see charlotte next to him he looks outside charlotte is in his royal carriage going somewhere without his knowledge he's like where the fuck is she going in my carriage she's off to go see his mama so she busted in bursted in on his mama having breakfast with somebody else right and she's like good morning bitch first of all i don't even think she greeted that lady she's like first of all what the fuck is going on because I noticed that before George moved in with me, all the knives in my house were sharp. Now they're not. All the drawers have been locked. What the fuck is going on? Is the king mad? Am I with the mad king? Has he gone mad? Here goes his puss ass mama lying through her bonded teeth. Oh, if you had the weight of your shoulders, if you had the weight uh, of the happiness and the misery of an entire kingdom sitting on your shoulder, you would go mad too. Bitch, that's not what the fuck I'm asking you. That's not what the fuck Charlotte was asking you. She's asking you a question and you know the fucking answer to it. It's a yes or no question, bitch. And here she go during Black Mama Month. Well, you don't understand what it's like to be a mother. When you become a mother, you'll understand the, 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 the extremities you're willing to go to for your child. You know, exhausting every physician exhausting crazy ass physicians to come up with a solution you'll understand what it's like to leave the edges of his nature undisclosed to his wife who should be grateful for her to discover and Charlotte is like the edges of his nature bitch like don't don't uh uh no no uh uh bitch not the edges of his nature and Queen Charlotte is like bitch the edges of his nature was screaming at the sky last night, bitch. What the fuck is this? The edges of his nature. No, there's more to be disclosed here. You have me marrying somebody that I don't know. I didn't ask for any of this. Y'all pulled me. Y'all pulled my black ass from black Germany. With my black ass family. Took me away from my family. Took me away from my normalities. Took me away from my native language. Took me away from my native food. To be sitting here and eating all this saltless ass food. All this unseasoned ass food. With this crazy ass white nigga. And you want me to be grateful for that? Because why? Because I'm black? Because I'm a nigga? See that... <laughs> didn't I say it was giving... Only a nigger could handle this shit right here. Let's, let, let's just fork them over to a nigger because they're good with trauma. Didn't I say that? And this moment proves what I said. It really gave that. Because for them, they felt like, you know what? We're not going to pass on this trauma to a fellow whitey. We're going to pass it on to a black person because a black person will be grateful to be here. But here's the thing, bitch. She came from royalty. Like, that, that's the thing, like, with racism, it's, it's the gaslighting of it all with white racist people. They want to make you feel as though you should be grateful for this. Bitch, I came from royalty, puss asshole. I came from royalty. I came from a royal family all the way in Germany. I didn't ask for any of this white shit. Y'all brought me here. Y'all brought me here for whatever the reason. I hope we get into that in the last two episodes. But y'all brought me here for whatever the fuck reason. And now you're sticking me with this man who has this sickness that don't nobody want to talk to me about. And me as a black woman, it is my nature to try to fix it. But I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to. 
I shouldn't have to. Y'all are white. Fix this shit. That's that racism. I'm telling you, I, I, I knew that that's what it was all along. It was, oh, we'll give it over to this black girl because this black, this black girl's gonna be, this black girl's gonna be happy, so happy and grateful that we brought her up in here. And I'm here to tell you, baby, white royalty is not it. Okay, I'm just here to tell you, it's not it. It's not it. And I really, really wish, oh my God, like, <sighs> it's so sad that now we don't really have like, black royalty the way we should because white people destroyed that they really destroyed that and then flip the script and make it seem like we should be happy nah bitch ain't nobody happy to be a miss of y'all ain't nobody happy to be in your midst okay our shit is fucking lit we don't need y'all shit all right okay um but anyway as they're having this back and forth we see that george over here is the conversation and he goes back to the physician literally goes back to the physician in that electric chair room and says strap me in i want to be i need to i need to fix this you need to fix me and that's where episode four ends this was a roller coaster this first of all this is amazing but this is so triggering like this is a lot and apparently it's only two episodes left. Bitch, I need more. I, I already know this is not enough for me. This is not enough for me because I have so many questions. I have so many questions. But I'm glad that now I understand what was happening with George. But I'm pissed off. Like, I'm, I'm actually pissed. I, I don't know, y'all. Anyway, drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on episode three and four. Do you agree with, you know, the views that I have of this? Um, and yeah, I'm going to try to get you guys episode five and six, the finale by the end of this weekend. Y'all, there's so many shows coming out. There is Selling Sunset, I think is out now. Uh, Young, Rich and African, I think is out now too. I will be reviewing that. I'm actually going to do like a, I think I'm going to do like a, a small recap of some of the things that I liked from the first season. And then, you know, I'll go into, I'll start reviewing the new season. Um, also, I'm working on getting an interview with Chelsea, who is part of Selling Sunset, the only black girl there. I think there's another black girl. Is, is one of the white girls biracial or something like that? I think so. But anyway, she's a black girl, dark skinned, they like me. Um, I'm working on having an interview with her for the channel. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Uh, she has a lot to say. And so I'm going to try to binge watch the season over the weekend so I can get my questions ready. Anyway, y'all, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.